After we witnessed the assembly of the sculpture in France, it took them about a week to disassemble it, load it into the containers, nine containers, but then trucked from Chambray to Marseille, where it got loaded onto a container ship. It was then at sea, which was supposed to be about four weeks. It ended up taking about six weeks because of everything from seas to logistics, port issues, that sort of stuff. The interesting thing with the ship is they actually had a tracker app on the ship, so they sent us a link to it. And we were able to watch it make its trip from France to Italy to Spain, across the Atlantic, south of Haiti, up to New York, and then down to Miami. And then once it landed in Miami, the nine containers arrived on time, on schedule, on sequence. And then we were pretty excited to see the first truck roll into campus. When the trucks finally started rolling into campus, there was a, a feeling of, probably a feeling of relief, if you will, from you know the team kind of seeing all that hard work come to fruition. When the nine containers arrived on site, we knew exactly what to expect at that point. We immediately set the first three columns. And then we spent the next week doing ground assembly, which was kind of piecing together the rings, the almonds, you know, the various components that could be pre-assembled on the ground. After that week, we were able to then assemble the entire sculpture in four days. That process took us four weeks in France. So we, we definitely learned a lot from that process and it went very smoothly in the US because of it. When we lifted that massive Susan and John Sykes bell into place, it was the first time they really saw their bell in context with, you know, what this plaza could and would be. They've been so great to the university. It was just nice to kind of be able to create an event and a moment for them to really understand the impact that they've had on this campus. When we topped this project out, it was it was a surreal moment. When the Sykes and the Vaughns and the rest of the project team were sitting there watching this final piece be placed, it was nice just to take that moment to pause and reflect on everything we've accomplished and just marvel at this sculpture that we'd created. You know, when you look at this sculpture, you look at what we've done here, it takes a team that cares to create something like this. And you can tell by looking at surreal how much love and care the whole Picard Foundry has for their instruments. And I, I, watching him was, was so emotional because it's one of his grandest moments in his professional career. It's not only a bell. I, I told you it's my daughter, so that's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to see the structural people, who had worked in building as for years weep. To see it finally come to fruition, it was just unbelievable. Couldn't imagine it. You know, it's just a great shared feeling that we have done this, uh, even though we got a bit more to go. <laughs> Oui, yes. Thomas, on a eu, on, on a eu une erreur d'empérage et elle a coupé. C'est pas moi qui l'ai coupé, hein. Ouais. Yeah. Thomas, I have changed. I put the start at, at 90 instead of 100. Okay. And I reduce the, the power of the start from 9 to 8. 9 to 8. Okay. In this arsenal, we've got 
uh, four swinging bells and uh, we need to precisely adjust the angle of swinging. Thomas, I give you the degree of the angle. 25 degree. It rings at about 41, 42. We have to review the angle, make sure that the bell will swing properly to get both sound at a good level. Very clear, very well balanced together. It should be ringing soon, 44. It's ringing. Okay. Here we've got the sculpture outside in a big plaza, so we still have a lot of uh, adjustment, a lot of tuning of the responses of the keyboard. This work has to be done with the musicians, of course. Hey! Howdy! Hello! Bonsoir. Nice to see you! <laughs> nice to see you. The time has arrived! When I first saw the shape and the bells, it was incredible. You know? It has transformed the campus, I think. Everything ready? I think you have to test and right. let us know. Now the question is, are the musicians ready? <laughs> it was pretty amazing to hear the sound, you know, such a beautiful sound. And, and I tried it to play fast notes and to have a keyboard that connects to the bells and it's so responsive. You can do dynamics, that was I mean, unbelievable. I didn't expect anything like it. Well done. <laughs> I love it. This is so strange because the whole thing for me has, has been a culmination of my dreams, you know. In many ways, I have this strange pedigree because I'm a choir director, I'm an organist, and I'm a caroleneur, and I have all of this available to me. I have a one-of-a-kind job. You know, this is a one-of-a-kind instrument. How many notes can it play at the same time? Uh, uh, you can try there is no limit because uh, oh, okay. uh, you can play. Uh... Oh, okay. I wondered about that. We can play duets then. And we can have two keyboards. Oh, two keyboards. We oh, can okay. set up... I didn't realize I was part of this dream. I'm like, pinch me, how, do, how, does the, how, did, how does this work? How can I be in a place where I have access to these instruments that I've, I'm trained on? You can hear the right hand? Yeah, it's much better over there. Yeah. I noticed that when you, you walk around, it's a different sound sometimes, and you try to find the best spot. There are several ones, because it has to do with the place and the buildings, you know, they create a resonance. I'm, I'm adding a lot of velocity. So, so you need to put too I, much... I, I feel that I have to play it too loud okay, to hear it from, from here, but from what does it sound like out there? Mm. Play it right in here. Uh, yeah, I... You hear the left hand is too loud, but... Hey! GZ! Play the right hand louder. Oh, there it is. Now that octave's good. I would like just a little bit. A little bit more. Yeah. Like this one. So we ask Thomas to use the software developed to rearrange, rebalance this work. And he just was able to take his laptop and make those adjustments right there on the spot, which was, that was really fun to see. To see and hear the change within a few minutes, that's unbelievable. You can try all of them. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's easier. Now I can hear it. Without uh, destroying the keyboard. Right. Uh, I don't have to <laughs> play it so hard. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Yeah. So I have so much respect and admiration for his brain. Like, that's, that's cool. The technology to make this possible is really outstanding. Now I can play soft. It, it responds more to the soft touch now than it did before. Awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm thank glad. you. Yeah, I'm happy. It's a musical instrument, so the ultimate judge are the musicians, and they judge well, so we are happy. We now have our musical department set up. They now have the tools that they need to learn how to play this instrument, and it's going to culminate into the first performance, and we're really excited to hear it. We're going to have to spend the summer just getting used to how it works, what it can do. I'm interested in the diversity of music we can play with it. You can have concerts with choirs or with brass ensemble. Let's try an orchestra. Let's do something with a, with a vocalist. It'll be an opportunity for musicians to experiment in ways they never have before. It'll be a challenge, but, you know, that's part of our job as educators is to help teach students how to adapt to different environments. 
Students are already excited. I know my piano students want to play it. See what you can do with it. Maybe some students will have some brilliant ideas of what and how we can use it. I think when the plaza is done and the fountain is running, everyone who visits campus will want to sit and just have a special moment with that incredible sculpture. It's something so unique to have on campus and you know people will want to come here to play the instrument or we will have artists that will plan concerts. Now, I can't wait to see all of those things happening on our campus. And it would put UT on the map uh, internationally. It's going to mean that this place is special and now we have a, an oral representation of that. We are really excited about the students and faculty getting ready for that first concert. It will just be a, a huge crescendo on campus. I can't wait. 